Hello, Orion Gear here. This particular episode of Arg My Optics is well long, so we've cut it into more digestible chunks. You can find the previous part right behind this in our uploads, unless you've already listened to it. In that case, welcome back. Let's get back into it, shall we? This is interesting because then when the film happened and it had its success, didn't they then start regretting it and then were like quick to like get out a cartoon with the name Ghostbusters? Yeah. And then that's why we have the real Ghostbusters cartoon mm-hmm. um, in response to that. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't think Ghostbusters was A, expected to be as big a hit as it was, mm-hmm. or B, expected to be as popular with kids as it was. Yes. Because it wasn't really aimed at children. It was children, child-friendly to a certain extent. It's quite scary. You know, yeah. Was... yeah, but I mean, it, it was, I think it was a PG. So kids could go and see it. But I don't think they... I don't think it was conceived as a franchise. It was conceived as a movie that would make some money and then they'd go and make another movie, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't think no, anyone expected a toy line and a TV series and all that kind of stuff to unfold out of it which is why it took them a couple of years to do re- the real Ghostbusters. It did take a little while after yeah it wasn't like a lot of the other things at the time which had they like Transformers had the franchise all kind of planned out of like toys are going to be coming comics yeah you know coloring books <laughs> yeah because it's the it's the inverse of that Transformers was in a way, quite cynically conceived to tell <laughs> toys to children. Like, it was never some fantastic idea someone had come up with uh, of a story they wanted to tell. It was like, we've got these Japanese toys that turn into robots, <laughs> vehicles, they turn into robots. How do we sell them to kids? And that was it. That was the driving force behind the TV show, the comic, the movies, <laughs> everything. Whereas Ghostbusters was Dan Aykroyd writing a script mm-hmm for a movie that he really wanted to make. Mm-hmm. After that, the companies get involved and like, oh, we made a lot of money on this and, you know, the loads of kids liked it, so maybe we'll make a TV series based on it. Like, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, do you want to talk about that now? Should we talk about the cartoons? Yeah, let's talk about the cartoons. I forgot to send it to you, but did you ever see the promo for the real Ghostbusters cartoon? Uh, what do you mean, like the pilot or...? The pilot, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think I've watched it. Yeah, can you know how they all look like the movie versions of themselves and they had the grey jumpsuits? in that pilot oh no i haven't no i haven't no, seen so, yeah, that, I, know, no. I, forgot, I forgot to send it to you but okay we'll show it to you after but there is um it's like an extended version of the intro and you know how the mm-hmm. ghost is walking down the street and then all chaos starts to ensue mm-hmm. that happens but they have the normal jumpsuits and the ghosts they all kind of capture at the end of the intro yeah are running around the city and they try and catch them and all of their look especially peter looks more like dan Aykroyd, not dan Aykroyd, like bill murray in this promo yeah This is mostly correct. The promo features more movie-accurate jumpsuits, and arguably Peter's appearance is a tiny bit closer to that of Bill Murray because he has darker hair and a rounder face. But the character designs are much the same as the final version of the real Ghostbusters. Link in the description. Well, I think that the reason that they didn't do that is because they hadn't got the likeness rights. That's what I thought, anyway. They didn't, and that was probably why they had to have such dramatic changes. In terms of, you know, colour of hair and, you know, obviously they make it more colourful for kids as well and toys. Yeah. I think it was a good move because they made them all distinct. It did. It did. You know, in, in Ghostbusters, they all wear the same outfit and it's three white guys with dark hair and a black guy. <laughs> they look very similar. And if you put that on a... A kid's show. It was... <laughs> yeah. You're going to go, which which one of the three white guys is this one? Like, so... They, they 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 went right. You know, you're gonna wear brown. You're gonna wear a brown jumpsuit. You're gonna wear a a, a kind of bluish grey one. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're gonna make you all visually distinct. You're gonna have blonde hair. You're gonna have orange hair. You're gonna have black hair or whatever. And that made them more. Yeah, you could tell the difference between the characters for a Saturday morning cartoon, which is pretty important, I think. It was it was really good, and I think the um, their personalities that came out from the series. It's almost, you know, kind of influenced what people think of Ghostbusters as well. Like, it's re- yeah. in the show, Ray is even more enthusiastic about ghosts than Dan Aykroyd was in the films. And yes. he's on even more of the science guy making all the tech gadgets and stuff. Before, it was kind of him and Ray, but in the show, it's I more, guess so. got a, a gadget every week he's invented. 
They very much stick to the characters from the movie, though, the, char- the characterizations. Yeah. The only difference is that Winston gets a much bigger role and actually becomes yes. as important a Ghostbuster as the other three. He's not just in the background, you know, sweeping up. He's um, it's Arsenio Hall who does his voice in the cartoon, isn't it? It's right. It's a nice, interesting change of like how, yes, like how he gets his spotlight episodes and stuff. Mm. And also Slimer as well. That's where he really gets cemented as a character. In the cartoon. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. You're not a fan of the high-pitched Slimer version? you know. I don't know why you've got to make a ghost a pet. It's a kid's show. You need, to, you, need the, uh, you need the mascot, you know. I think that was a big issue. And that, again, affected Ghostbusters too. Yes, because that's where he became uh, known as Slimer. He didn't have that name in the first one, let alone have a name. No, he was just a he was just a little blob that blo- slimed someone. Wasn't it actually? Wasn't Dan got the idea of him from his friend? Was it John Belushi? Were they actually? Well, they had ideas of making Slimer. I think Slimer had already been designed as a as just a ghost that was going to be in the movie mm-hmm. and going to be in that scene in the in the hotel. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened was. They later said, "Oh, we want you to make it look like John Belushi." Yeah, um, because then he can still kind of be in the movie, be a part of the film. Yeah, and they kind of based the character of Slimer a little bit around the character that John Belushi played in Animal House, I think, mm-hmm. as in a bit of a slob who eats lots of food. But I'm sure that I saw on the um, Movies That Made Us documentary they were talking to the guy who designed Slimer, and he said. They came to him quite late in the day and say, said, make it look like John Belushi. And what he did was, he didn't. He just said, it does look like John Belushi. <laughs> um, and they were like, okay. So, but yeah, it was supposed to be a, a tribute to John Belushi, mm. in a way. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's interesting how that carried on into the show. And I think the golden seasons of The Real Ghostbusters is the first three or four. After that... yeah. Uh, when they change the voice actors and it becomes Slimer and the real Ghostbusters or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> yeah. No. no. <laughs> I mean, we should probably talk about why it's called the real Ghostbusters, as we're talking about with the Film Nation thing. So apparently, Columbia, after the massive success of Ghostbusters, they were in talks with Film Nation mm-hmm. to make a Ghostbusters cartoon. And then they, quite late in the day switched and went and got Deke to do it instead. Mm -hmm. So Film Nation, being a bit kind of irritated by that, made their own cartoon series of Ghostbusters. Which is the two guys and a giant ape with a gun. Yeah. But people know this difference. (laughs) And one of the guys is called Kong. Yes. (laughs) But the ape is called Stacy. Yes. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, so Film Nation were like, well, we're already, we're we're going to, put out a Ghostbusters cartoon whether you like it or not. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to do this anyway, so, but we're going to make it our property. And then, like, massive dicks. <laughs> As the name suggests. Columbia, <laughs> Columbia and Deke <laughs> yeah. went, oh, we'll just call our, our TV series The Real Ghostbusters. <laughs> Which I think is a bit of a... Because it's not the real... In fact, if anything... Filmation series is the real Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. This is the original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking the scene with the kids and how they are chanting for He-Man is another dig at mm. that because it's Filmation who makes He-Man True. and was a big popular thing at the time, wasn't it? He-Man and Ghostbusters having the toy lines at the same time. Was it a dig or was it like um, a, a, re- a reference? Because, I mean, they're not being mean about He-Man, are they? They're being quite positive about it. The kids <laughs> want He-Man more than Ghostbusters. <laughs> I suppose so. So but... <laughs> uh, maybe it's them saying sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I did. W- I did rewatch probably about six or seven episodes of the first season of Real Ghostbusters in preparation for this, and I'd forgotten. I mean, I haven't watched it in years, but it was pretty good actually. The animation was good. The writing was good. I had no idea that J. Michael Straczynski wrote on the series. It's... People li- listening, he's pretty famous TV and comic book writer and he wrote Babylon 5 mm-hmm. amongst other things. He wrote he wrote Spider-Man for a while actually. He was a main writer on Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man for oh. a while. So like there was some quality writers on the show and it yeah, I mean the animation's pretty pretty good, voice acting's good. It's a good it's a good cartoon. 
It was really fun. It was a nice, like even the theme song, you know, it was the original theme song, but the way they changed it for a, like a kidsy, yeah. you know, Saturday morning cartoon vibe. I liked it. That business. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, honestly, since watching it, I've had real Ghostbusters version of some of the music in my head. It's kind of sticks. <laughs> it is pretty good. The only thing that I found as a kid myself mm. is that when the real Ghostbusters came on, I was a little bit thrown by the fact that they didn't look like the Ghostbusters. Mm. Yeah, I, I would imagine that would be quite um, uh, a shock, a bit jarring. I definitely, almost definitely seen Ghostbusters, the movie, before Real Ghostbusters came out on television. Because I was like eight when Real Ghostbusters came out on television. Mm-hmm. So I would have, I'm pretty sure I'd seen the movie before. So yeah, I was a little bit confused by that. But you know, they still had the same personalities, so it was, it was fine. Well, I don't know why they've chose to make Egon's hair so strange. Well, I mean, have you not seen his hair in the films? It's impressive how high it's sitting up and <laughs> how he's got it like Yeah, that. but it doesn't form a ton. No. <laughs> it's just, they just exaggerated it, you know. Exaggerated it? It was completely different. Made his, but yes, made his, I know what you mean. Made his glasses red and everything, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I thought Real Ghost was, was pretty damn good. And it ran all the way through to the second movie, which was, as we've already spoken about, the second movie was sort of influenced by the cartoon mm-hmm. and it ran for several years afterwards, didn't it? I think it ran for quite a while. Yeah. It ended like early mid nineties, something like that. Oh, I don't know. Cause I didn't look to see when the Slimer one carried on for a bit longer than the Ghostbusters. Well, it's still, it? it's still the same thing though, isn't it's it? Still the, it's still the same thing. It's but the same show. It carries on. Well, even more Slimer. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just checking for, uh, continuity. Uh, la, la, la. Yeah, it finished in 1991. There you go. Yeah. It's um, I like the real Ghostbusters as like a kind of you know what if splinter timeline of Ghostbusters because in all intents and purposes, it all everything that happened in the first movie is canon in the cartoon. Yeah, because there is an episode. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, they do they do reference it, don't they? I think yeah. They talk about what happened in the first movie, and there's even an episode about them coming back from fighting Goza mm. in their you know, regular jumpsuits. Yeah, and explains why they changed. Why they explained to their different colours. Yeah, yeah. I think, that's the, I think that's the episode actually when they introduced Slimer as being mm. a part of the Ghostbusters because their suits come alive and spawn ghost versions of them and try to take them out. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting how it could just be another part of Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a separate entity in a way, but it is definitely there's, it's connected. Mm. It's all there. It, it can all be thought of as the same universe, yeah. if you want. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I kind of think of them as separate things, but, you know, if you wish. And, I mean, the toy line kind of tied it all together as well in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. There was one Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters episode I wanted to point out was Egon's Ghost, where in one of the episodes, Egon dies at the beginning. Uh-huh. And he comes back as a ghost to help them like revive him because he hasn't really died but he's kind of like a ghost. Oh that that old chestnut. Yeah, and it's it's weird watching it now after he is actually dead. It's like kind of like a it's a nice episode as well. Like it's a really they throw a lot in it. It's a big episode. Well, you could say that that was kind of a a bit of foreshadowing in a way or um mm-hmm. spooky. Yeah, spooky. Just like when Janine says to him in the first movie, mm-hmm. I'm very psychic about these things. I think you're going to die. To Egon. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, maybe. But I think that's what's quite... If I've got anything positive to say about Afterlife, and I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not hugely negative on Afterlife. I just don't feel like there's any need for it. But um, it's good that they've got the kind of idea of Egon being... It's Egon's family, isn't it? It's Egon's granddaughter and so mm. on. Uh, that connection's quite good. So you've still got... E- Egon's still tied into the movie somehow. So, you've, you know, mm. it's a nice tribute to, Re- to Harold Ramis, who, you know, was you know vitally important to the Ghostbusters franchise and the movies. You know, he co-wrote the first two movies. Um, it wouldn't be the same without him. No, oh, yeah, 100% agree. I know that um, when you know, Afterlife started having teasers and pictures and whatnot there was a lot of speculation if it was going to be ray's family in connection to that whole him selling a house that he lived in oh. when he was young yeah in the 
But obviously, as more rolled out and found out it was Egon, it was like, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, well, it makes perfect sense. It makes it does, and it's a good way to go. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah it's the best way to pay tribute to him because the others, we all, well, we all know by now, the other three are going to reappear in the movie anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can't have. I mean, unless you're going to have him reappear as a ghost, um, <laughs> which you know might be a little bit, uh, what's the word, inappropriate. You want to talk about the next instalment of the cartoon? If we must. <laughs> Ghostbusters Extreme. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason it only lasted one season, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, t- to be fair, the time it came out, there was a lot of cartoon shows on at the time that probably... Gri- that were better. Well, it's not so much better, but it gripped kids in a different way because of the type of animation that was available at the time and like how faster it was being produced like all the different cartoons mm-hmm. i mean of course there was loads in the 80s but i mean they all kind of had a they were really well written in the, at the time but yeah when we into the 2000s like the visuals like shot up into all these different faster ways of animating and whatever so it, mm. i get it from that well i think ghostbusters extreme is painfully 90s it is <laughs> i mean just the word extreme <laughs> Like, it's a term that was everywhere in the 90s. That's why I had to, I had to send you the toy commercials of how they talk about extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah, extreme, <laughs> extreme. It's like, what's, what, what is extreme about these Ghostbusters? Nothing. Uh... There's nothing extreme about them. I watched the pilot and nothing else, mm. and it was shit. The, the, the pilot, I think, is the, the only time they really talk about these proton packs they're making. Well, the proton packs they have in the new show is meant to be stronger than the, the previous one. Yeah, good idea <laughs> that. Let's redesign all the iconic gear for no reason. And, you know, I, I don't see why they did it, because I don't... Even as a kid, I didn't... To sell more toys. I didn't I didn't like the new designs of all these the different gear. And No, it's rubbish. I mean, if you're going to change it, at least do, try and do something better. I didn't find any of the characters very interesting. They're all a bit boring. I guess we should explain that. So in, Ghost, in Extreme Ghostbusters, it's continuation of the real Ghostbusters universe. Yes. Where the Ghostbusters, like in Ghostbusters 2, have all gone off and started to do their own things. Right. And Egon is teaching in a new university. And he's some of his students, you know, who are really into the paranormal activities. Not all of them, but <laughs> about three of them out of the four are very into it. And ghost shenanigans happens. Three students who he has never taught. Yes. <laughs> they just turn up on the first day. Yes. <laughs> Is it four of them? It's four, sorry. It's four, it? yeah. Four. Yeah, they they turn up on the first day and they immediately think he's the best. He was a, he was a Ghostbuster, isn't it? <laughs> and, they all, and they all want to be his student. Uh, but there's no, one, there's no other students. There's only these three guys. Yeah. Four guys, sorry. Uh, one being a girl. Mm-hmm. It does kind of push the whole diversity thing, which is fine. But um, I just I just thought they were all very uninteresting characters. So, yeah, like you say, it's a new team of Ghostbusters, a goth girl. Mm-hmm. And you've got a kind of slacker guy who's meant to be like the Peter Bateman kind of character, I guess. And you've got like a kind of jock kind of guy in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the kind of sensible one. Mm-hmm. But they're all quite boring. I think... Um... Kylie is the only one I think has kind of been a fan favorite from the show. With that being mm. because of her goth girl style or her, her taking the show, but she's the only one, as far as I know, who has been taken into other media. Mm-hmm. Like her character makes so many appearances in IDW run of Ghostbusters. But anyway, yeah, the it's this other this new team has come to help Egon, who isn't really much of a Ghostbuster anymore, but he has to become a Ghostbuster in this yeah. new show. But he's, he does it as more of a mentor, if anything, to the, to the four. Yes. And they kind of take up the mantle and they become extreme Ghostbusters. Or just regular Ghostbusters. No, no, this is... A, <laughs> I didn't really remember it until I, I watched some episodes. That they refer to themselves as extreme Ghostbusters. Like, if they answer the phone... Why? They're like, extreme Ghostbusters. <laughs> This also plays into something I was going to say about Ghostbusters 2 that I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. Why did they redesign the logo? Uh, 
I I I agree with that. As a as a movie, I like the the logo. I get it. I don't. But in the terms of the film, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that there is a new. They shouldn't be wearing it. Why have they got the ghost? <laughs> I mean, the, the original logo is perfect. It, it, it encapsulates everything that the movie is. Mm-hmm. You've got the supernatural mm-hmm. being combated by reality, like like a kind of like by science and so on, because you've got that that kind of no smoking thing over the top of it. Like, <laughs> it's perfect. It's the it's the marrying of 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 the supernatural and the re- and the real together in the logo. You know, it might have something to do with the cartoon. You you because in the the cartoon when they had that. Do, 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 or they would flip the logo. It mm. would have different um, emotions or characteristics. Like I don't know what's going on, or what he, the ghost in the logo would do different emotions in the cartoon. Mm. Maybe that's why. I think uh, I think the reason they redesigned the logo was a marketing tool for the second movie. But yeah, it didn't make any sense that when they reformed the Ghostbusters, they went, "Oh, we're going to change the sign and we're going to change the logo on our outfits." Yeah, I... to a guy doing the peace sign. <laughs> It's, I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no. I mean, I like the logo, but just in the terms of the film, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the logo. I don't think it makes any sense. Full stop. I mean, it it makes sense as a marketing tool, but that's it. Like you notice, they've not used it. They've not you. They've not redesigned the logo for any further um, Ghostbusters things. Oh, so what do you mean? Well, the logo doesn't look any different on Afterlife, does it? Oh, I see. You know, apparently... The logo doesn't look any different on um, on that rubbish movie that came out in 2016. Oh, I see. But yeah, Extreme Ghostbusters, I found growing up really scary. Really? And even watching it as an adult, some of the episodes are still pretty creepy. I think that's true of real Ghostbusters as well, though. Mm. I mean, re-watching them now, I don't find Ghostbusters 1 scary but i do find there's scenes of ghostbusters 2 that are very unsettling like the do you mean extreme you mean real and extreme no 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 in the films it's uh, the guy who owns the museum the the little guy he doesn't own it yanosh yanosh him that guy yeah there's certain scenes in the film that even now i find really freaky with the the power goes out and he goes to see dana and his eyes glow i just think it's really ridiculous it's it, it, what is he used to, He dresses up as a nun or a, a nanny or something. Yeah. So Vigo somehow turns him into a ghost, a nanny ghost, with a pram. Like why? I mean, he he was a genius of his time, Vigo. <laughs> I think there were scary bits in Ghostbusters One. Oh yeah, as well. No, I, I they were definitely scarier. The bit where the bit where Dana gets possessed, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty scary. When she's sat there and the, the arms come out of the sofa. Yeah. That's pretty good. I don't know. The ghosts in Ghostbusters 2 are more fantastical and a bit weird. Like, it's like, well, what are these ghosts of? <laughs> What's that giant thing in, in the arch? Who? And then the Titanic's going to turn up. So the Titanic's a ghost now. <laughs> It does start to fall apart. The whole kind of se- sensibility of it starts to fall to pieces. Yes, a bit. That's where it feels very like real Ghostbusters, isn't it? When they have that type of stuff, because that's what it's like in the cartoon. This is a, mon- a monster of the week, and it's very colourful. And... They shouldn't be called Ghostbusters. They should be called like supernatural busters or something, <laughs> because like it's not always ghosts, no. and it's um, yeah, there's kind of monsters. A lot of them. A lot of the times they have to do that, and they like. Mm. There's episodes where their proton packs don't even work on the bad guy in question because it's a demon or something, or it's something else. So they to rejiggle their equipment. So it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the proton pack gun thing. Mm-hmm. So it's called a a something wand. I believe it's called a proton wand, but then I don't know if that refers to the whole gun. I think that's just the gun thing. That's just the gun part, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a proton pack. In real Ghostbusters, or is it in um, Extreme Ghosts, but Ghostbusters, they keep referring to them as proton blasters. Mm. And then I'm sure there's another, like a like something thrower, particle thrower, particle thrower. Mm-hmm. That's another name mm-hmm. for it. So mm-hmm. they don't seem to have decided what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a proton wand, a neutrono neutrono wand. I think they neutrono wand. I think that's what it is. Yes, I, I, neutrono wand. Uh, right. I've just googled it. Here's the Ghostbuster fandom page. <laughs> oh, brilliant! So the the opening the opening paragraph on this wiki is the particle thrower, also known as proton blaster, proton gun, positron collider, neutron <laughs> neutrona wand, or proton wand is the blaster that connects to the hose to the proton pack. <laughs> so we've got particle thrower, proton blaster, proton gun, positron collider, neutrono wand, and proto wand. That's six different <laughs> names for the same thing. I, I rest my case. Um, wow. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a... Yeah, we just, we just come up with some a, a vaguely scientific sounding name for it. And we'll 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 use them we'll use them at different times. I feel like whenever you see um, Dan Aykroyd talking about Ghostbusters or the technology, he throws around those words a lot when he's describing it. He acts like he understands it, and he doesn't. Like <laughs> you see him talking about it. I think you. I think you. It, he was on that documentary you sent me about this third game, talking about it. Oh, about the game, yeah, yeah. And he talks about it like he has knowledge on this completely fictional <laughs> technology. Oh yeah, didn't he give an estimate to how much it would cost or something? Yeah, in real exactly. Life? <laughs> so, and, and it's like, you, you're you just making this up. You're making it up. Or, or, or you've read, you've, you've done some kind of crazy research on the, the most, the darkest corners of the internet somewhere <laughs> and come up with this kind of bizarre shit about how you would technically catch a ghost. And I wouldn't be surprised if half of that theory is based on people watching Ghostbusters. So it's probably come mm-hmm. full full circle. Full circle. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd is now probably spouting nonsense that people created based on the nonsense he spouted to make the first movie. It wouldn't surprise me. It's they're probably definitely before happened. Well, he is crazy. <laughs> My optics. We've done the cartoons. So should we talk about the toys? Yes, the toys. Uh, first of all, did you have any? I didn't, but my younger brother had quite a lot. I think he had all four Ghostbusters and Ecto-1. Okay. And and later on, he had some of the the kind of wackier Ghostbusters, the ones with like fright features where you push their oh, yeah. arms together and their eyes bogged out and yeah. their hair <laughs> went up. Yeah. He also had the Ghost Popper, mm-hmm. which like the, the, the basic, like a Nerf gun. Mm-hmm. He also had a he had a Ghostbusters um, baseball cap as well. I, I remember, oh. but that's yeah. He had that, that stuff, and yeah, they were they were pretty good toys. Mm-hmm. Not the greatest, but pretty good. Exo One's a bit disappointing. Oh really? Well, it, it, it it's it's just empty. No, <laughs> like it's just an empty shell. <laughs> like there's no there's no room for anything in it. Like it's it looks good on the outside, I guess, <laughs> but like you can fit. T- I think you can fit two Ghostbusters in it. I think so. You can't yeah. fit all of them. Yeah. You can't fit all of them in it. <laughs> and it had like a kind of play feature, which is like a winch to catch ghosts. Mm-hmm. But that took up the entire back section, <laughs> so you couldn't you couldn't put anything in there really. And then that had that stupid seat that sat on the top. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that was dumb. That's very much cartoon, isn't it? The the. <laughs> <laughs> and also it didn't fit in the firehouse no it just kind of had to dangle there it had a slot to sit in but it was still hanging out of the firehouse and... it either had to hang out the back or hang out the front yeah one or the other <laughs> because it was too long to fit inside the the firehouse the firehouse wasn't very good either oh there's nothing in it again it's the same as uh it's the same as the uh xo1 like there's nothing there like it's just it's just three levels with nothing on them and it's it's all to do with a with that oh that bloody slime. You have to you have to rem- so you could pour the sli- you have to remember pour the slime through the top. This is when like kids had imaginations and they they would fill in the blanks of all these all these uh <laughs> these issues. No, I'm just, I'm just it's it's not a it's not a there's not much to play with <laughs> with the with it like it's it's just a big plastic block. And also the the fire pole didn't work unless you put two Ghostbusters on it. Did it? No, because the weight distribution was all wrong, so it'd stick it, as it was going down. It'd stick all the time. Unless you put two Ghostbusters, one on either side, then it would go down. 
Oh, wow. I mean, the real Ghostbusters toys, mm -hmm. I have vague recollection of because um, my siblings are 10 years older than me. So they were around at the time and had a toy or two, but um, it was more their friends had the rest of the toys. And I did see them growing up and, you know, mm -hmm. going for, you know, play dates with their younger siblings or in school when some kids would bring, you know, during uh, days where we were bringing toys, yeah. someone had the other Ghostbusters toys. I mean, that was my experience for that for the longest time until Extreme Ghostbusters, where then there were toys on toy shelves for me to get. I had no idea there was an Extreme Ghostbusters toy line at all until you pointed it out. Oh, it was so extreme. How did you not know about it? <laughs> well, what was it? 1996, was it? Something like, that? Something like that, yeah. When it came out here. Yeah. I was too busy with other things. I wasn't really interested in... Uh... We've talked about this before. Like, that was the same kind of time Beast Wars came out. I'd moved on from mm. toys at the time. So I wasn't really paying attention. I remember the Ghostbusters Extreme being on telly. Mm -hmm. And I remember maybe watching the odd episode and thinking, yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. But yeah, I didn't pay much attention. I didn't know there was a toy line. Wow. Um, it was a very interesting toy line. Um, it wasn't like the real Ghostbusters because uh, it, the toys were not very show accurate at all. Like they were very, had them all in different costumes, different colors, weird mm -hmm. um, proton packs and very odd looking facial expressions for the characters weird articulation they were smaller than the real ghostbusters toys yeah i mean the real ghost but the real ghostbusters line did go crazy and wacky towards the end like really nuts i mean they went out through the gate weird and wacky <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean like uh, uh, but basically the trouble with ghostbusters is mm -hmm. it's not really designed as a kid-friendly toy-friendly franchise it's four guys fighting ghosts so once you've done the four guys, mm. the car, mm. and the firehouse, what else do you do? Loads. Not an awful lot. Loads and loads of ghosts in various. Yeah, different... loads of ghosts, and then loads of version, and then loads of different ghost bosses in different outfits. Yes. yes. <laughs> and that's what they did, and like that's why you got all these kind of really kind of crazy, and also obviously with it being nineties, well, late eighties, early nineties. Um, you got loads of um, loads of kind of neon stuff coming through towards the mm. end because <laughs> everything went neon in the nineties. <laughs> oh yeah, they carried it on in extreme as well. They, oh, mm. so many bright colours. I re I remember getting the toys and painting the proton packs, um, the proper colours and like, oh god, show accuracy. It's changing. Even I had um, <laughs> I think I had all the Ghostbusters. I got Ecto one. Yeah, and I remember changing Ecto one. I don't know why I didn't just take off the, stick the stickers looking back at it now, but they had the Extreme Ghostbusters logo, right? which I didn't like. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to paint over this and draw my own Ghostbusters logo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and nice. throughout all the years, it got, you know, batters and bruises, and then they would be just like, well, I can't find this antenna anymore, so I'll, I'll just, you know, make shift my own antenna, or I'll add bits and pieces to it to one. <laughs> So you're customising your own Ecto-1? I was for the longest time. Even, yeah. you know, just painted all of it white again. <laughs> it was, oh yeah. <laughs> it was a great toy. Well, talking of Ecto-1, for a moment we can talk about Transformers, I guess. Because mm -hmm. there has been Transformers crossover toys. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've got Ecto-Tron, haven't you? I do. Ecto-Tron, he's, uh, he's a really, really good representation of that first movie. Look for Ecto-1. I guess we might as well talk about the crossover. It's um, mm. IDW story that was attached to the 35th anniversary of both Ghostbusters and Transformers. Yeah. Because like we said, they both came out in the same year. Yeah. It's been 35 years when Ectotron came out. Yes. I, c I couldn't get the, um, the comic book to read it, but I read up some stuff and I watched some videos about it. And it seemed really good. It seems like a really interesting crossover idea. I think the same, it's the same writer that's writing the current Beast Wars comic oh, is it? as well. Okay. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, um, it did have a comic book that came went along with it, didn't it? And um, it was the first figure in like the collaborative line that we've now seen a few yes. other releases in yes. since, like um, X Men and uh, 
Top Gun mm-hmm. and got a Jurassic Park one coming up soon. Got Dracula now. <laughs> yeah, Dracula, the Dracula one. So yeah, it, the the concept being Transformers crossing over with another franchise. Mm-hmm. So Ectotron is an Ecto one that turns into a Transformer who has very kind of um ghostbustery features like he he has a proton pack. He has a um, <laughs> particle thrower. Um, he comes with a slimer. Yes, and he's yeah. got he's got like the Ghostbuster goggles on his head. Mm-hmm. And also there was the um, there was MP10G as well. The um, the repaint of yes. Masterpiece Prime. He's in the comic book as well. Yes, it, it, it makes sense why he looks like that. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a fairly nice redeco of MP10 in white. It's a bit silly and gimmicky, but quite fun. <laughs> I'm guessing you haven't read the, book, the comic book. No, I have no interest in the comic book. Um, I'll do my best to say what happens. Uh, Goza yeah. uh, appears on Cybertron as the Autobots leave. Right. Just like in Generation 1, the Autobots leave and you know the Decepticons are getting ready to chase after them. And Goza appears and just wipes out the Decepticons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, to asking them to pick a form of a destro- you know, destroyer. Okay. Obviously, the first person to think of something is Starscream. <laughs> right. And what is it? It's himself. <laughs> Obviously. <Right. laughs> Which then, as the Autobots are going through space, they get a signal from Earth of some sort of weird energy signature. And Ectotron is a is an Autobot. He's a, a normal mm-hmm. guy in the ranks and he... Optimus Prime sends him down to investigate. An Autobot who looks a little bit too much like a Ghostbuster. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and turns into e- Ecto-1. He turns into Ecto-1. Upon landing on Earth, he, bump, he finds the Ghostbusters. Right. And the car has been disabled somehow. I think it falls into a sinkhole. sinkhole. Right. Okay. So he has to scan the car, become Ecto-1. And, you know, it's just... Weird stuff with like Starscream ghosts and the shenanigans with the Ghostbusters. It's a it's a story that shouldn't work, but it kind of really fits quite nicely for a four issue run of a crossover story. I've heard it's fairly good. Um, it's just I just have no interest in it in it because I'm just not into Transformers and Ghostbusters crossovers. <laughs> I just don't find them interesting. It's not something I'm ever going to want to read. But talking of which, this is not the first. Transformers and Ghostbusters comic book crossover. Is it not? No, way back during G1. Okay. Andrew Wildman, Andy Wildman, a regular artist on Marvel uh, UK Transformers comic, but he was also, at the same time, he was drawing the real Ghostbusters comic. Right. So, in one particular story, he drew a bunch of characters kind of background characters in Transformers to look exactly like the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> so they appear in a, in a in like a backup story in the uh, UK comic. They're not Ghostbusters, they're not them, but they look... I, sh- I sent you pictures of them, didn't I? Yes, yeah, yeah. I was wondering where that was from. I... <laughs> it's from it's from a comic book that came out in like... I think it was like issue 216 or something of the UK comic. Okay. So like 1986... Nine, nine eighty nine. There you go, nine eighty nine. So, yeah, he just he just slipped it in there. <laughs> so that I mean it's not really a Ghostbusters crossover, but three guys who look a lot like Ghostbusters appear in the Transformers comic. Oh, there you go. My optics. The game. Oh, do we have to? Yes. There was a computer game. It was sort of the third movie. It was the third movie, so it's parts of coconuts about it. It's canon as far as the creators are concerned. Yeah, I think that you would really like the game, but I think you would like the game is playing it. I don't know how you would feel about the story of the game. I don't think I would like the game. Period. Because <laughs> I don't play computer games much, so I mean, I don't want to be a Ghostbuster. Well, the game came out in two thousand and nine. Terminal Reality. They made it. Um, in the game, you play as a as a new recruit of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. And very similarly to, like, Ghostbusters Extreme, you're testing out new equipment for the Ghostbusters as they kind of mentor you. Sure. And in the game, you kind of similarly hit similar beats to the first film. Right. Like, going back to the hotel to get Slimer, Goza turns up and Evo Shandor, long-lost relative, makes an appearance and 
Walter Peck's in it again. The whole cast is there again. Yeah, in yeah, I film. know. And the, the voice acting is done by Bill Murray. And, and so even mm-hmm. though he had no interest in doing a movie... He did this. He did do this. I mean, it, it looks... Honestly, like you, you, you sent me like a trailer for it and so on. It's, it's not something I'd want to play. But <laughs> it looks good and it looks like an entertaining addition and possibly a better addition to the Ghostbusters franchise than mm-hmm. Ghostbusters 2 was. Well, like... The Ghostbusters two and what's the other thing called? The Return of the Ghostbusters. I think I sent you. Oh, what that 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 fan made that fan made <laughs> film. Yeah, I can't remember when that came. I think it's two thousand five or two thousand and six. Howard Ramos actually saw that and liked it so much. He he liked it so much that it is canon in the Ghostbusters universe that his nephew or whatnot has a different region of Ghostbusters. Right. As this type of franchise thing. Okay. It's referenced in the game to solidify as it's being part of the Ghostbusters world. Well, that's nice. That's nice that those enthusiasts who made that yeah. movie get recognition. It's, um, it's re- it's, I, think it's, I think it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, throughout the years, I it seems to get bigger and bigger, but the Ghostbusters fandom seems to spread far and wide. And people have like their own patches of different firehouses that... They want their franchise to be recognised as, and right. Like, there's a lot of people who love Ghostbusters, and to have something like that being, you know, seen by the creators and thinking that it's worthy of being part of it, it's pretty cool. No, it is. It is cool. I mean, it looked a bit shonky, but um. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cheap. It was made on a cheap budget, but yeah, I mean, that's that's great. That's great. It's, 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 it's a, what I find fascinating is how. Like, because you really, you really love Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. and I just find it fascinating that people could be that invested in it. When for me, it's like it's one good movie and a bunch of not very good stuff. <laughs> I just love that movie, and I don't need anything else. I mean, okay, Real Ghostbusters was a good TV show, but again, I think the the original movie is the best thing that ever happened in the franchise. I guess it's it's probably just about the the ages of it hitting people because. You know, dressing up like a Ghostbuster, like, I remember making a box of cornflakes into a proton pack and, yeah, yeah. you know, shooting my cousin in the face with a Nerf gun, you know, I remember it all, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 like, I, I did know some kids who had some of that roleplay stuff. I mean, we did have the Ghost Popper thing. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's, no, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing that it's captured so many people's imagination, I think. Hmm. Enough for these guys to make their own fan movie and for them to put all that effort into that third game. Mm-hmm. And I think that's got a lot to do with Dan Aykroyd as well. Dan Aykroyd is still very passionate about it all. Oh, yeah. He won't miss an opportunity to talk about Ghost Stories Vodka. So he, yeah. he's always pushing one or the yes, other. Yes, he's a very strange <laughs> individual, Dan Aykroyd. But speaking of that, there's this, there's one other like splinter off Ghostbusters that Dan Aykroyd was a part of. There's a film called Evolution. Yeah. Have you ever seen that film? Yes. No, I haven't seen it, but I know the movie you mean. It's uh, David Duchovny and some other yes. people. And it's yes. kind of, it sort of tries to do what Ghostbusters did again, in a way. It's, it's basically like Ghostbusters, but with aliens instead of ghosts. Yeah. Which, very much like Ghostbusters, it's a very good, solid one film, doesn't need anything else to it. Dan Aykroyd is, in, even, in, is even in the film. But... Like Ghostbusters, it got a Saturday morning cartoon, Mm. which is very much like the real Ghostbusters. The way they jazz up the colours, have their own little slimer and everything. And it's they they operate from a firehouse, you know. Really? Oh, okay. I didn't know know they went that far. It's a very much like a... It could live in the same world as the real Ghostbusters, Mm -hmm. but I don't think officially it is, but... No, I mean, I, 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 I'm I, aware of it and I'm aware that it is definitely heavily based on Ghostbusters, but I didn't know that it was that connected. Mm-hmm. I've never seen it. I've heard it's not great. It's very much a film of its time. I don't think mm. it doesn't hold up as well as Ghostbusters does. But... What does? What does, <laughs> though? Well, well, that's very true. <laughs> like, I, like I said before, one of the best movies ever made. One more cameo that Ghostbusters makes an appearance in. Uh-huh. That... To this day, I don't know if it if it's anything more than a cameo, if it actually is, you know, saying that these two things exist in the same place, is 
Dan Aykroyd's appearance, fully dressed as a Ghostbuster, in Casper, the very first film. Oh, did that happen? Yeah. The, <laughs> All right. In the haunted house of Casper, friendly ghosts. Yeah. The people trying to get the ghosts out at one point phone the Ghostbusters. <laughs> All right. And Dan Aykroyd turns up. I'm sure I've seen that movie, and I don't remember that. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favourite cameos. <laughs> No, I didn't. I, I don't know how I missed that. My well, I suppose, since I've just spoken about how the original Ghostbusters is an absolute masterpiece, mm-hmm. we should talk about the reboot of Ghostbusters. Oh, do we have to? <laughs> yeah, you wanted to do it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual Dave pretty much wrote what we were going to talk about and he listed this as something we need to talk about. Yeah. What you wrote was why Ghostbusters 2016 movie failed. Um, well, I know you haven't seen the film for a start. And I don't intend to. I would highly advise you don't. <laughs> After watching Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 on Netflix, it keeps trying to make me watch it. No, don't. I mean... I'm not gonna. As you know, I'm a very optimistic person and I would say what something... <laughs> To give it a chance, have your own view of it, you know, you decide yourself. But with this, don't do it, mate. Just don't do it. No, no, I don't plan to. <laughs> I've watched reviews of it, that's enough. I've seen people tear it to pieces. I mean, can I tell you why I think it failed? Go ahead. Because it's not particularly funny. The comedy is a bit, it's very, what's the word, uh, juvenile. Mm-hmm. from my understanding lots of fart jokes and that kind of stuff yeah and ghostbusters didn't need rebooting in a way it had already been rebooted when they made ghostbusters 2 it's so similar to the first movie <laughs> so why make another ghostbusters that's the same again the same movie again this is the third time they've made that movie um it's the it's the dumbest and most lazy way you can make a remake which is just to do it again with new people it... <laughs> I, 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 oh, <laughs> just thinking about it. What Sony, as far as I understand, wanting to do was to reboot the franchise because they had this massive plan of like film, cartoon, games, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, toys. Like they wanted it all. Yeah, they just wanted to do what was done in the eighties again. It's like we were talking about the um with DC yesterday, like. They wanted some of that Marvel money. They wanted a franchise. They wanted something to be banking on every yeah. two years. And and that's why they're doomed to fail. Because if you're just copying other things, it's it's impossible to recapture what the the magic that made that first Ghostbusters movie. It's absolutely impossible. You, it was it was completely organic. <laughs> you can't just go. Oh, these these were the ingredients, and then just throw them all in a pot and hope hope to get that amazing that amazing thing again. It's not even. It's not even that. That's it. I can't even describe it. It's like they take everything that was before and try and put a new label on it and pretend that it's something new. But at the same mm-hmm. time, they are not even spitting. They are slapping <laughs> people who loved the franchise from before like it was. It, it was an insult. Yeah, and it also got caught up in a lot of controversy because people thought that. The only way fans were reacting this way because it was all led by... It had a female lead, which actually had nothing to do with why the film was bad. No, I think they just used that as an excuse. In a way, I mean, I don't think it was a cynical act. I don't think they they went, oh, we'll redo the movie, only this time it would be women. And then when people don't like it, they can go, well, you don't like it because it's women. I don't think they did that. But, (laughs) But they did kind of end up using that as a kind of excuse for it being bad yes if people said oh this is bad you go oh you just don't like it because it's women you're you're sexist it's like no this is just not a good movie yeah yes <laughs> the fact that it's women is fine <laughs> i ain't got a problem with that it was already established that you know kai was a ghostbuster and ghostbuster extreme there was other teams of ghostbusters at this point who had female-led ghostbusters in it in fact originally ghostbusters extreme was going to be an all-female team yes yes they did. They were, that was going to be the original idea. So, you know, so it's, so it's not a new idea and it's not particularly clever. <laughs> like I was saying before, they're taking the same idea of the original movie. They're going, right, let's get four, this time female, comedians mm-hmm. from the Saturday Night Live kind of circuit 
and put mm. them in the movie. But what they're forgetting is that that's not what made the movie great. What made mm. the movie great was Dan Aykroyd's belief in ghosts and his, his kind of need to make a movie that was almost... It was a comedy movie, but it still there was, there was a serious grounding in kind of his actual beliefs in there. Mm-hmm. And then that chemistry between these guys had all worked together a lot. And it was just perfect. I mean, what makes Ghostbusters good is three great performances by three great comedians and Ernie Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's not the premise, not and it's not the story, and it's not the proton packs or Ecto One or the Firehouse or the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Mm. It's it's that it's those three guys giving three amazing comedy performances. So if you haven't got that, then you know you haven't got anything. But I think the thing that bothered me most about the film, and it bothered me about a lot of films, to be fair, the film introduced rules about ghosts and the equipment, Mm -hmm. and then immediately throw those rules out the window with no explanation. Oh, what, the new movie, you mean? um... The new movie, yeah. Yeah. Like, I like how in Ghostbusters, like, on their first mission, Mm -hmm. they talk about how dangerous the equipment is and whatnot, and then they talk about don't cross the streams, like, as a rule. And it's something that they only do because it's the last resort at the end of the film. Yeah. In this new film, they talk about how... They have to, you know, wear down ghosts and capture them and whatnot and how dangerous the proton streams are. And then on their first mission, they're like, I don't even know how to describe it. They're in a narrow corridor and they're all shooting their streams in front of one another and this could be lasering off each other's heads. So there's so many different times where they do things that doesn't make any sense. Like in the climax, they're just punching ghosts yeah. and they're killing them. You know, it's just, what? <laughs> how? Yes. <Yeah. laughs> and I mean, I'm not... I've. We've already said I've not seen it, but isn't there loads of stuff with the proton packs and with the technology and all that kind of stuff? Aren't they like using them to like lasso things? And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me, do you want to guess how much screen time the proton packs, as in the actual using of the proton packs, has in that first Ghostbusters movie, the original Ghostbusters movie? How long do you think they're on screen? Hmm... Probably less than a minute. Probably not even that. Yeah, one minute twenty eight seconds. There you go. It's not. It isn't long at all. No, they don't fire their streams very often. It's no. not something you see. Yeah, I got this. Um, I'm stealing this from review I saw on online. But the guys were saying proton packs are like lightsabers. Mm-hmm. They're cool if they're used sparingly, but if you overuse them, they get boring and unimportant. Yeah, no, I, I I completely agree. You know, yeah, that's um, mm. that's a solid way of looking at it. And I mean, I did find it funny in Ghostbusters too, when they went into the subway to find the River of Slime, and they got like halfway, and all these ghosts start trying to scare them, and they're like, "Maybe we should go get our proton packs." Like, yeah, yeah. why did we come down here on arms? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's when they when the ghost train runs through um, uh, Winston. <laughs> No, exactly. They don't. They do step it up a bit in Ghostbusters too, because you've got those like slime cannons and so mm. on. But still, fairly sparing. It is quite sparing in that film as well. Yeah, they don't do it all the time. No, because that's not what Ghostbusters is about. No, you're right. It's not actually about catching ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. Like this is the framework to hang those comedy performances off of. Not, not the other way around. You know. Well, I don't think the people, you know, pushing it at the time um, cared about that. They were just thinking about money. Because yeah. even the game, I, I did send you the trailer for the, their game. Yeah, I did Did have a look at it, yeah. I found it really weird, that even at the time, like, why doesn't the game have the girls in it? Like, it's got this random other set of characters in it. It's got nothing to do with the film. They just have the same type of jumpsuits. And it's a very weird top-down game. Where it's kind of like another franchise of Ghostbusters or something, like another team is up. <laughs> Sony do weird shit, basically. It was very, it was very weird. Like it, and it was what made it weird. It was like when I, because at the time I was so into this film coming out, like I, I wanted this to be good. So I was looking at all the behind the scenes stuff of it at the time, and they were so confident that this film was this was going to be do so well. Like they were talking about like they had built this whole. Um, office space for a whole new Ghostbusters section in Sony um, Studios mm. and stuff like it was like this was going to be the thing don't you worry <laughs> yeah 
I mean, I assumed it was going to be terrible. <laughs> but I assume all movies are going to be terrible. Uh, so, and then I'm, then I'm pleasantly surprised if they're not, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. It, uh, rebooting Ghostbusters, it's, it's like, why remake or reboot something that was perfect in the first place it doesn't make any sense to me if you're going to make a sequel or you're going to reboot something you should be you should be doing something different you know i don't think you should be making um a sequel or a reboot unless you think you have a really good story that you want to tell within that pre-established properties universe i guess they well that was the confusing thing as well at the beginning because that first initial trailer talks about 30 years ago there Mm. were four scientists and immediately people were upset with just that that one line. Because, like, Winston wasn't a scientist? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very true. Very true. And they, and they actually changed it in the second trailer to just say three scientists and something else. Like, <laughs> I'm like oh, yes, yeah. we, we did our research. Don't, don't you worry. Yes. Um, it's like, how can you get that wrong? How can you get that wrong? I don't know. Wrong? I don't know. It shows, shows a complete lack of understanding. It was very com- confused on what it was going to be because from all intents and purposes in the lead up you thought it was a sequel a passing of the torch because we knew the Ghostbusters, the surviving members of the Ghostbusters were in the film so we thought their purpose was passing the torch but that was not the case, they played completely different roles, I think Bill Murray dies which was part of his his willingness to come back so as long as he would come back only if his character died Yeah, Uh, a bit like like, um, Harrison Ford coming back as Han Solo Yes, yes, yes. So, same kind of thing, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bill Murray just doesn't care. He's not interested. Uh, well, they obviously did something now because they brought him back for the new film. Well, that's a good segue. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife? Afterlife. Do you want to go first? Um, <laughs> well, Ghostbusters Afterlife at the moment, hasn't come out. When this podcast goes out, um, it should be coming out maybe in a week or two. Well, there you go. As the time of us um, recording this, we've only seen one or two trailers. I don't know if you've seen the other one. Yeah, I think I've, I've seen a trailer at the very least. Where we get a hint that this is sometime after the events of the first two Ghostbusters films. Yeah. 2016 didn't happen, which is mm-hmm. good. Did did the Ghostbusters computer game happen? Uh, apparently, but it very well could redcon the computer game. Okay. Yeah, and there's a, a family in a country, small town, coming to like reclaim their grandfather's possessions. Yeah. Uh, and it's heavily hinted that the grandfather in question is Egon. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's given. We know that. Yeah, we do. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but... To see what actually happens in the film is still kind of unclear. We just Mm -hmm. get glimpses of what could be happening. The only thing I think that we know is something to do with Evo, Shandor, and Gozo again, though. Something. Yeah, because there's a a mine shaft or something, isn't there? Like with with Shandor written on it or something. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it looks okay. I I think Sony are being cleverer about it this time than they were the last (laughs) time. It's like, you know, that failed. And immediately they just go, right, let's reboot it again. <laughs> you know, okay. But um, it looks okay. It looks okay. They're clearly kind of going for a Stranger Things kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. With kids being Ghostbusters, because the kids are going to end up being Ghostbusters. You kind of see it. like, mm-hmm. And you've even got a guy from Stranger Things in it. Yes. Definitely. And it's set in a kind of like a, a small town... A bit like Stranger <laughs> Things was. So it, it feels a bit like that. So at least it's not another lazy rehash of the original Ghostbusters. Yeah, I think this is going to be the first time, you know, a live action story is set outside of New York. Yeah. So that in itself is quite interesting because it's, you know, like many other superhero films or films of a supernatural nature it normally happens in a city. But this is quite yeah out in the middle of nowhere. So how that affects what happens in the film could be interesting, you know? Yeah. I think it's a, it's a clever move to make it... I mean, it's what I was saying before. It's like, make it different. Like, mm-hmm. don't constantly remind me how inferior this movie is 
or insulting it is to the original <laughs> Ghostbusters. Because that's what that t- the 2016 one did. It was. It's just very constantly much so. going, remember how good Ghostbusters was? Isn't this awful? <laughs> Why would you want to do that? So uh, set it somewhere else, set, make it, make it different, make the, you know, it looks like it could be a good movie on, of, it, of its own right. It, mm-hmm. I mean, it could, it could end up being terrible, but it could be good. Mm-hmm. And at least it's different. At least you're not com- constantly comparing it back to the original. It seems to have a different tone. There doesn't seem to be very much humour in it, for example. It doesn't really seem to be a comedy. Um, I think it's more of a modern type of comedy, like probably a bit going back to a bit more dry humour than... 2016s of fart jokes and stuff like that. I think it's going to be a probably B comedy, but not, you know, slapstick. No. I think it might be a reaction to how wrong they got it with 2016. Well, I bloody hope so, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I know it is I know it is in general, but I mean, the fact the fact that the the, the trailer at least doesn't seem to have any comedy in it. Mm. Yeah. I think there might be one joke the entire time. It doesn't feel like a comedy movie just from the trailer. It could be. But um, I don't think I think it's probably going to be more played more straight than any previous um, Ghostbusters movie. Oh, yeah. Like I I have said before in the podcast, I'm a big fan of trailers. And when that first Afterlife trailer came out, I had goosebumps. Like just having the what does he say? The thing that Peter says in the first film, um, when he's convincing Ray that they need to do something, do something with his technology. Like it's call it fear. No, call it fate. For whatever reasons, Ray, call it fate, call it luck, call it karma. I believe that everything happens for a reason. I believe that we were destined to get thrown out of this dump. For what purpose? To go into business for ourselves. That that, that line, yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone says it in the trailer. Yes. And then you have the shot of Ector one running through the streets and the siren going. I was like, yep, I'm in. Good or bad, I'm going to see this film. I love. I just love the way that trailer was edited. Okay, I'm hopeful. You know, I'm very hopeful. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. If it's good, it's good. I don't need it to exist. There's no. There's no. There's no need for anything other than the original Ghostbusters movie to exist, in my opinion. It's all kind of diminishing returns after that. Yeah. Good or bad, do you think that we'll see another cartoon from it? Because there's a whole different world of Saturday morning cartoons now. Like, it would have to be a streaming thing. Is there even a world of Saturday morning cartoons anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there'll be a cartoon. Mm. I mean, there'll be kids. I mean, there might, might, there might be a guess, but I find it unlikely. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it depends how well it does, but it'd be interesting if they, you know, do that again. And have another type of kids focused thing. Yeah. One thing I'm not looking forward to in Afterlife is the original Ghostbusters coming back. Yeah. I just think that, that shouldn't that they should be avoiding that like the plague. Because it worked it worked really well in the Extreme Ghostbusters and I couldn't find the episode to rewatch. But I do remember watching it as a child, and Yeah, but that's different. That's cartoons, isn't it? Like Yeah, I I I know, but I mean the concept of the Ghostbusters being retired mm. and having to come back for this big unusual threat and having to wear the gear again and everything. Mm. I mean, on paper, it sounds fine. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It might work. I mean, I think at best, this is going to be a nice little addition to the Ghostbusters franchise. At worst, it's going to be another thing that we have to forget about <laughs> and uh, and then in two years' time, they'll try again. <laughs> I think I'd have a much more positive reaction to it. Because you said you got goosebumps when you watched the the trailer. I don't get goosebumps when I watch any trailers, generally. But what? I'm not a big fan of trailers in general. I don't watch a lot of trailers. Uh, and, and I think trailers are usually very misrepresentative of the actual finished product. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. But I mean, I think I would have had a far more positive reaction to Afterlife, to the hype around Afterlife, to the fact that we've got the trailer, if the 2016 movie hadn't happened, because that was rubbish. Mm-hmm. So I've not got an awful lot of faith in this being good. It looks like it's definitely going to be better, but we just have to wait and see. I mean, this movie has a lot of cleaning up to do. I mean, 
in all fairness, when I watched Ghostbusters 2016, mm-hmm. I, like my friend of mine made me watch it. And I was so enraged and disgusted, I made us watch the first Ghostbusters film afterwards. And I felt so much better. You know, it, mm-hmm. it, if you do watch Afterlife and it turns out not to be great, my, my answer will be watching the first film again. And you'll feel right as rain, because that's, that's what I did. I mean, <laughs> Well, that's exactly what I've been saying all along. <laughs> Watch the first one. The first one's perfect. Well, who needs, who needs any more? <laughs> it's, it's a great film. I mean. <laughs> My well, that was a breath of fresh air, wasn't it? A podcast not about Transformers. Whatever <laughs> next? Dave and I plan to do more of these in the future, but only if you, the listeners, demand it. So let us know what you thought. What other topics would you like to hear us weigh in on? How can you do that, you might ask? Well, on social media, of course. You can connect with us on Facebook, where there's an Arg My Optics page, and I'm on there as Orion Gear. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Gear Orion and Orion underscore Gear, respectively. Virtual Dave, where can they send you fan mail? Uh, you can find me at virtualdave26 on Instagram. Excellent. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this podcast, you can let us know by liking, subscribing, sharing, reviewing, etc., etc. We really appreciate it if you do. We, of course, thank all of you for listening, but would like to give a very special thank you to the musical genius that is the Vidi Printer for not only writing and recording the very outro music we are talking all over right now, but also, at very short notice, throwing together a, a sublime cover of the Ghostbusters theme tune by Ray Parker Jr. that you heard during the intro. Don't you agree, Dave? Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, it's so brilliant, I'm scared it will get us sued. But it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I'll make sure to put in the credits that, uh, that <laughs> all rights reserved to uh, Ray Parker Jr. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening, and please join us again next time on... Arg My Optics! Optics!